You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> I'm Sarah Gilseth. Good morning, Sarah. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to a live edition of the Coffee Hour. You have uh, lots of buttons. Uh, so many up over there. Um, we have a lot of guests today, which <laughs> I'm very know. excited. Uh, an exciting story for our friends in the Northern Illinois District in yes. the Chicagoland area that we're going to share with you today about a wonderful uh, just. Uh, life opportunity that um, we're just so excited to share with you today. Yes. And uh, tomorrow, um, we'll have a chance to check in. We recorded with our friends from Life Ministry about uh, what's going on at the National March for Life. And so mm-hmm. we're going to share that with you tomorrow, as well as President Harrison with some insights on that and yeah. exciting news about the Million Dollar Match. Yes. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us this morning, Deacon Lori Trinchy for Stewardship, Administration, and Human Care Liaison for the Northern Illinois District. Deacon Des Lori, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Andy. I'm happy to be with you. And uh, coming along with you, the Reverend Dr. Alan Buss, President of the Northern Illinois District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Dr. Buss, thanks so much for being our guest on the Coffee Hour. Great to be here. Thanks for the invite. And Cheryl DeWitt, Executive Director of Redeeming Life Outreach Ministries in Sanford, Florida. Cheryl, thanks so much for joining us on the Coffee Hour. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Some exciting news about things growing in the Chicagoland area in the Northern Illinois District. Um, It starts in Florida. Cheryl, Mm -hmm. tell us about the work of Redeeming Life Outreach Ministries. I would love to. Um, Redeeming Life Outreach Ministries started back in 2012 uh, with a dream of um, helping women in crisis pregnancies um, with the things that they don't have in their life that... um, um, other women with, with solid families and an uh, infrastructure underneath them have, like faith, family, education, support, love, and uh, those things. So we wanted to uh, help our local crisis pregnancy centers around um, the area with uh, the next step of help. Once they've worked with a woman and um, taken her off of the ledge of abortion, often they don't have anywhere to refer them to after that. So we are trying to address that need where the women can stabilize, Many times they're uh, coming off of uh, drug addictions or very abusive situations, and they need a, a safe place to go to to nurture their unborn baby and to have a healthy pregnancy and later a healthy baby. And our our main goal, of course, is their spiritual well-being, um, and that's why we work closely with uh, I have a deaconess on staff, and um, at every location that is our intention because. The spiritual aspect and the spiritual care of these women is is our um, our top priority, and we do that through caring for them through their pregnancy and um, helping them to stabilize, get educated, and uh, independent. This is such a wonderful way that uh, we're able to um, uphold and, and the, the sanctity of life and and, uh, and all of these things. It's su- such great work that you're doing. Do you have stories of of women and children that? Redeeming Life has been able to help and to support. We do, and they're varied, and they're um, they're they're a combination of joy and heartbreak all together. But um, I'm thinking of a particular girl that we're working with now who uh, came out of a situation. She's trying to stay drug free. She was uh, homeless, uh, abandoned by the baby's father. It's really a, a unfortunately a theme that we see quite a bit. Um, and really struggling and, and was, you know, day to day trying to find a place to sleep and a place to go and j- just to get her very basic needs met. So um, she came into our program uh, completely lost and uh, has managed to she had this particular lady had to go on bed rest right away because of all the stresses that she'd been through. She was going into preterm labor and uh, the baby was just too small uh, to be born. So we were able to bring her in and immediately put her on bed rest, uh, which is unusual. We don't normally have to do that, but um, she, she got the care that she needed just through a safe home, consistent meals, healthy meals and spiritual care and proud to say that um, she gave birth to her little son on Christmas Eve Mm -hmm. uh, this year and or this past year this past Christmas Eve and they're doing very well and she's um, trying to um, she'll be going back to work very soon and for the first time in her life she is stable she came out of a childhood where um, there was uh, polygamy um, all kinds of 
wildness going on in her in her young life as a young four year old she remembers those things and and into a new life of hope and stability and uh, she's finding her moral compass. Deaconess Trinchy, what is the need for this kind of outreach in Northern Illinois? Well, Andy and Sarah and everyone, I think the need here in Northern Illinois is great because our laws here are very liberal um, for abortion in our state of Illinois. We have many people coming even across borders to seek abortion. And so we want to give moms and babies another choice and a choice that we feel is a life affirming and something that can give them the type of help and hope that Cheryl is talking about in what the moms have experienced in Florida, um, helping them to get out of that cycle of homelessness, poverty, um, and abuse, and giving them a real hands up in helping them move forward with their lives. Mm -hmm. Do you have any personal experience uh, with with women who who need this kind of support? Absolutely. And as a matter of fact, I was just talking to someone yesterday who said, you know, I wish that I had known something like this was even available. I had no idea that anything like this was available because what people will hear is there is access to abortion. There is a quick fix for this. Let us help you. Um, the, it's so important, I think, Sarah, to just get the word out about this and to let people know that we have a real culture of life here in um, Illinois, and there is a whole coalition of people working together to offer help to moms that are in need. And so, yes, this comes up all the time. And I think um, part of our job in the church is to make sure that our congregations and our schools are equipped with the information that says there is help that's out there. Um, there's a help help available in your communities as well. Get them that um, that knowledge. Um, have us actually speak about this and teach them, uh, share them that there are there are places that you can go, like Redeeming Life Outreach Ministries, that can give you that help and hope that you need. Yes, absolutely. I have known several people, and as I said, I just talked to someone that said, "I wish I had known that something like this was available." it would have given me or a friend or a family member another option. How great is the need in the Chicagoland area for this type of outreach? Um, I, I know you had shared with uh, with me off the air before we started that, um, that there's just such a great need. Do you have statistics on, on what the need might be? Yes, actually, they're talking about over 140,000 lives expected to be lost just in our area next year wow. alone. Wow. So if you just imagine that number of people and think about what kind of options are available, our, our homes are limited in the Chicagoland area. I think we have about 11 total in the state of Illinois. And so the need is great. The numbers are huge. Um, so there is a great need here in Chicagoland for help and hope for moms in need. So how do you look to address those needs? Um, tell us about the, the idea of Redeeming Life Outreach Ministries coming to Chicago. Deaconess Laurie. Well, I think for Redeeming Life, what it will do is it will open a home in an area right now that doesn't have a maternity home. So it, it helps to increase that, um, that network that's available to help people here in the communities. Um, our crisis pregnancy centers that we have here in the Chicagoland area in particular are expanding their outreach right now. And several have um, already asked to partner with us to um, help to get the word out about this. So there is definitely a need in our area here in the Northern Illinois District. Cheryl, what are the things that you've learned from your time with Redeeming Life Outreach Ministries in Florida and how to implement that, how to bring that to a new location like Chicago? Well, Chicago is our first expansion project, and we're, we're so proud to be working with the NID. And so what we're basically going to be doing is replicating exactly what we're doing here because we've had great success and have, um, you know, you know, 
a wonderful program underneath um, our our home that supports the women in life skills and education and uh, parenting, um, and not not to mention that they um, go to church every week and Bible study. So we're going to take this program and simply replicate it um, in uh, the Northern Illinois District. Now we know the home will look a little different, and the the program, of course, will be you know local. Uh, but as far as um, being able to implement it. Uh, we we are we are ready to go. Uh, we're working on um, our location and all of those things. So uh, we're we're really excited to be able to start with Northern Illinois because of the passion of the people there and the support we've gotten from um, President Bus and really the entire uh, NID has been um, has made it the perfect place for us to come and and set the vision that we want to replicate this kind of home all over our Senate. We need to have many, many more homes opening. Um, And since we have the model and the uh, prototype, um, we're ready to go. And and, uh, Illinois has gone so well. um, Obviously, there's some delays here and there, but uh, we are very excited to be opening um, soon and uh, and in a place where it needs it, uh, just the need is just tremendous there, given the fact of their the very liberal abortion laws there. And we'll learn more about that involvement with the Northern Illinois District in just a moment. We'll hear more from President Buss in just a moment. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Bethesda Lutheran Communities, a proud recognized service organization of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, has a new name, Abelite. Serving people with intellectual and developmental disabilities across the country, Abelite meets the needs of the whole person for a lifetime through many programs, including safe and loving homes and a strong community of faith. Abelite cherishes the opportunity to improve lives and humbly accepts the responsibility to lead by example, just as Christ encourages us to do. Learn about the mission at abelite.org. Male and female, he created them. Thus the Lord made Adam and Eve and then put them in relationship to each other as husband and wife. This relationship of husband and wife is a frequent theme throughout the scriptures. And it also happens to be the theme of the January issue of The Lutheran Witness. We talk about husbands and wives, how modern media, particularly children's movies, portray fathers. Visit cph.org slash witness to order your copy or visit our website witness.lcms.org. The Lutheran Witness, helping you interpret the world from a Lutheran perspective. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We're learning about the work of Redeeming Life Outreach Ministry. Started in Florida, now expanding to Northern Illinois. Joining us today, the Reverend Dr. Ellen Buss, President of the Northern Illinois District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Dr. Buss, why is it important to you and the Northern Illinois District to be involved in this life-affirming outreach? Well, there's so many negative things happening in our culture, and obviously we are concerned about uh, families, we're concerned about people, and this is a wonderfully positive thing that we get to do. It's been amazing to see the support. Um, Too often Christians, Bible-believing Christians like us, are viewed what we're against, but this is so life-affirming and uh, just flows from our relationship with Christ and love for our neighbor. So it, it, it's really exciting to see the excitement that the project and doing something positive is generated. How does this fit in with uh, all of the ministries that Northern Illinois District has uh, for things like life ministry? Well, we have kind of three words that we're hanging our hat on the last three or four years. Uh, the first, they all start with W, <laughs> word, word of God, uh, wellness, and then witness. And so I really think that this ties in wonderfully because our, our view of life and from conception to natural death flows from the scripture and the life that we have in Jesus, a wellness, the well-being of people that we know or don't know, people that have maybe made some difficult choices or poor choices or have had some really difficult circumstances. And 
we all that we do bears witness to Jesus Christ, who took on flesh and blood for us. So it flows wonderfully, and it is, um, it's a positive thing that we can do in a time that has been very, very um, difficult, in, in many ways, pandemic, and obviously where our culture is going. And it also, I think, has a bigger vision of uh, redeeming life, and what can what we how we can partner as the greater synod and districts tell us more about that partnership working with an organization you know several states <laughs> away and uh, different time zone you know what tell us about that relationship that that started with redeeming life outreach ministries in Florida and how that relationship is growing well you know what's really cool is i believe it was in a january right before the pandemic that i was down there for a meeting with lutheran church extension fund and we saw the facility of redeeming life we uh, met cheryl and ed and they they told the story we we walked through the facility and it was just good to be down there and um, obviously i know that uh, our life task force here in northern only wanted to do something and it just was kind of natural rather than trying to reinvent something is to multiply what's already happened there. LCEF has been a great partner in this financially with their support. And uh, and uh, so our folks, you know, we had to wrestle with a little bit and try to figure it out. But, um, you know, the model for whether it's congregational ministry, school ministry is, is partnerships. And uh, this, this is a great partnership. And uh, I'd rather go to Florida in January, but uh, it's good that, it's good that the DeWitts have to come up here when it's cold, although I noticed that they figure their travel schedule uh, based on maybe weather up here. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Deaconess Laurie, what what are what are the next steps for this? Uh, what what is what's going to happen now with the the partnership that's happening um, and all the the plans that are in place? Uh, what, what's what's happening next? Well, I think for me, what I'm seeing right now is just this excited unfolding in God's perfect time and perfect place. And mm -hmm. President Buss alluded to how this is so important for word, wellness and witness and kind of bringing people back together after the pandemic. So how do we do ministry during the pandemic? How does this help to bring people out of their cocoons and get people together? So right now we're in the um, phase of fundraising for the project. We're in the phase of awareness raising for the project. How this is a partnership across synod and across district and across all of the, the church Churches and schools in the Northern Illinois District. It's not just a ministry of the host church for the organization, but it's something that we can all come together in a very positive, life affirming way. So I'm in the process of going out doing presentations in our schools and in our congregations. People are a little bit nervous about this because they're hearing sometimes the negative press about the issue, but coming back to the positive about this, how this makes a difference in people's lives, how it tells them about Jesus, about how lives are transformed and saved as part of this ministry. It's so exciting to build on that excitement and see people coming together in all ages and stages of this. Um, we're asking people for prayer. We're asking people for financial support, fundraising projects. They're, letting, they're coming together and they're doing creative, fun things to bring awareness to this and it's bringing people together all across of our, our district where they might be doing ministry in their own little congregation but they're looking at the bigger picture of what it means to be the church coming together around something that's so important and that brings Christ to so many people so it's just so exciting to be part of that um, bringing the people together as we come together hoping for this new place I, I talked to uh, one of our Lutheran schools uh, this week that's doing some Something for Lutheran Schools Week that's, that's supporting um, Redeeming Life Outreach Ministries. And they said, what can, what can we do? And I said, you know, the thought of a hope chest kind of comes to mind. You know, we're hoping for this ministry. It's going to give moms hope. So what can you do to share that life message right now with the people around you? Um, and then what can we put aside in that hope chest for when the home opens? And then how can you come together to be part of that? 
it's just fun to listen to all the different ideas and people are excited. They're coming together um, as what were once maybe basketball rivalries on the court. And they're saying, hey, we, we like this church over here. We're, we're going to work with you regionally to do this. And people from all over the district are getting involved. It's not just the host church. Cheryl, we've been talking a lot about the ways that uh, that a, a new launch of Redeeming Life or the expansion of Redeeming Life Outreach Ministries in Chicago is is going, and and what that what those partnerships look like. What about through the years? Once a, the the outreach is, is launched and able to start serving women and children in their community, what do partnerships look like in the ongoing day to day things? How do congregations and individuals partner with you to help keep Redeeming Life Outreach going strong? They partner with us in so many ways. You know, we use uh, volunteers from the churches um, surround in, inside of the districts. Uh, they run, like Lori um, stated, they run annual campaigns for us. So they they understand that it takes support from all over to to make this happen, and that we are the their positive life choice. Um, I say to everyone that's part in partnership with us here in Florida that you know it's 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 very important that they. Um, connect with this positive pro-life ministry. It's my belief that every church should have some sort of life ministry going on in their congregation, and this gives them um, a positive outlook uh, or a positive way to connect. So our partnerships, you know, are so very important. I spend a lot of uh, Sundays out visiting other churches here in in the Florida Georgia district, and I hope to do more of that in um, in Chicago with Lori soon as the weather improves. <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, so we, we and our partnerships also go on with um, at the district level, at the congregational level, and LCEF has been an amazing partner with us. Um, and so it it just grows and and has really taken on. Um, this life of its own, uh, and, it, and it's exciting to see. Deaconess Laura, you and Cheryl have both mentioned that that this is a way to to talk with people. How have you seen that um, that this this project has given you a way to uh, to share about life ministry? How is this How is this giving you those opportunities? Well, I think it's brought a great level of awareness to people that were not aware um, of any of this before, uh, because I think a lot of the reason that we don't know is there isn't much talk about um, pregnancy or things like that in our, our churches. It's a little bit um confusing sometimes in, in how to approach this. And so I, I often hear that, you know, after I've come, they're like, oh, we're so glad we were we were nervous about talking about this. And now we are so excited about this. We want to get involved. So um, our teachers and our principals are saying this is a great educational opportunity for our kids. It gives us an opportunity for service. Um, it gives us an opportunity to teach about the sanctity of life. So it's it, it's exciting from all those aspects as well. And it's sort of contagious. You know, one, once the first person steps up and says, we'd like to have you do this, and they hear about it, they say, oh, gosh, you need mm -hmm. to have someone come and talk about redeeming life. So we have congregations now that are starting diaper ministries, and maybe that's their small way of beginning to step into this. But as they see the difference that it makes in people's lives, they come around and say, this is a positive way that we as the church can get involved. And that's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Lori, what are your needs in the Northern Illinois district? What are the, the next steps and the, and the needs and the support you need to, to make it to that next step? I think uh, right now, Andy, prayer and helping us to get the word out about this ministry, um, helping people to come together to you know, raise that awareness to help raise funds and to look forward with hope and not grow weary in the time that we're waiting. Um, I know I'm not a patient person and, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to get this open tomorrow, but God is weaving all of this together in a beautiful tapestry that is just bringing people together all over this, this district and through this pandemic and it's creating an excitement and awareness that we've not seen before. And honestly, I'm so grateful for President Harrison and Deaconess Tiffany coming to Chicago and so excited about the match grant. I remember a conversation I had with uh, President Harrison at the Chicago March for Life back in 2017, 
where I started to tell him what was going on in our life ministries here. And I think building upon that excitement and the needs here in Chicago land and all across our state are so important. And so just to continue to get that word out, um, if anybody would love to have a presentation or hear about this ministry, to please invite us to come and, and share this with your congregation or school. That would be greatly helpful right now. Very good. Lastly, how can we find out more about Redeeming Life Outreach Ministry Chicago? Lori? Well, we have um, an expansion project page on the Redeeming Life um, website. So if you go to www.rlom.org backslash expansion, there is a whole page there that talks about this ministry expansion, the history behind it. It gives you an opportunity to donate. It gives you an opportunity to advocate um, advocate for this ministry. We are in need of congregational advocates. Um, there's a way that you can sign up for that there. You can sign up for information on the ministry and you can learn how you can become involved in volunteering. We have an army of people right now that are waiting to help us with this expansion project uh, set up. So this is their way to sign up hear about what's going on and to get engaged. Thank you so much, everyone, for being our guest on the Coffee Hour and God's blessings on your next steps with Redeeming Life Outreach Ministries in Chicago. You've been listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Call us at 800-844-0524-KFUO. Christ for you, anytime, anywhere. Anytime, anywhere.